today. A powerful prayer strategy that brings God's healing and abundance. And it all begins with 21 seconds a day. Right now on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burns. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. I'm Jonathan Burnus. The Lord's Prayer is one of the most recognized prayers in history. It takes about 21 seconds to recite it, but those 21 seconds can renew your spiritual life. Our guest today has discovered how to use the Lord's Prayer to take your prayer life into an entirely new level. Please welcome the author of 21 Seconds to Change Your World, Dr. Mark Rutland. Welcome back. Nice to be back. Dr. Rutland, I really enjoyed our time yesterday, but we only started to cover a vast amount of material. In a 21-second prayer, there's so much in there. We, we, I said yesterday that I think so many of us, myself included, take it for granted. The Lord's Prayer changed your life at a, at a dark time in your life. Just go back and recap that. You were in the midst of a very successful career in ministry. Yes, I was the president of a university in Florida, rapidly growing, expanding. We built tens of millions of dollars worth of buildings while I was there. The enrollment nearly quadrupled. It was, it was tremendously successful. But I was struggling with this sense of, uh, of darkness, that it, I was sinking. And uh, finally, it reached a place where I really struggled with the, with the feeling that I wasn't going to pull out of it this time. I had struggled with this on and off through jun since junior high school, just seasons of feeling that I was losing touch. A counselor I saw said the two most intimate realities in a man's life are his spouse and his God. And he said, if you lose intimate contact with those two, th then he said, your whole life is, 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 begins to sink. That's exactly what I felt was happening. And I had to have some way back. I, I asked you if there was an instantaneous change, and you said, no, I had to dig my way out of this. I had to, oh. I, I had to this was a lifeline that I, I, I had to pull myself out of this. And the, but this prayer, this 21-second prayer, did that over time. Yes, and uh, I'm, I marinated my soul in the 23rd Psalm and, and uh, in the Lord's Prayer. I mean, I soaked myself in these two. And it was, it was not an instant thing. Uh, everybody wants an instant. They want to put the money in the slot and, you know, success pops out the bottom. And it's, right. it's just not always that Drive way. Drive through success. Yes. And this was a, this was a tough, long struggle. But uh, it began not only to rebuild intimacy with God, but with my wife. We began praying the Lord's Prayer together. Dr. Rutland, talk about some of the revelation. What was, what was Jesus teaching us in the only prayer that he actually gave? The, this is the only prayer the Lord gave us. Well, uh, first of all, there, there are three main things. As I said in yesterday's show, that the reality of the, the, the reality of God, it's not, only, it's not only fundamental prayer, it's fundamentally Jewish. Everything depends on the reality of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is. You can go on from that. Is one, is whatever. But the Lord is. That's the fundamental reality reality upon which all of Judeo-Christian thought The basis hangs. of faith. You must believe that God is and a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So our Father who is. We say our Father who art in heaven, who is. Then He teaches on the character and nature of God, that God is heavenly. He's not like, He's not an abusive, negligent, uh, preoccupied Father. He's, he's never too busy for us. He's heavenly in nature. His will and His purpose for our lives are good. When I submit myself, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth, which is me. That's, that's not a prayer of... That was a huge revelation that's well worth repeating. Uh, not on earth, but in earth, in, in earthen vessels, in us. To pray it either way works. On earth, great. It's that's all a great stuff. Yeah, if it would just come on Washington, I'd be okay. <laughs> but, but on earth, but, but in earth... That's a different thing. I can pray that over my children, my spouse, in, in the earth which is in, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in the earth of that child, in, the, in my own earth. That, that was huge to me, Jonathan. When I saw that, I'd never seen it before. Then, then the, 
the issue of the providence of God, that I can believe God to take care of me this day and this day every day. God will take care of me. It's a tremendous peace. In, in success, sometimes it's one of the reasons that performers and athletes get bogged down in stuff like drugs and alcohol. People say you're only as good as your next at bat, mm -hmm. as, as your last at bat, but that's not true. You're only as good as your next at bat. You hit four home runs in a row. When you come to the plate the fifth time, nobody wants to see you beat out a single. They expect a home run. A lot of pressure. Oh, it's huge. It's horrible. But if I can get out from under the pressure of success and get under the reality of God's providence, this day God will give me everything I need. I'm amazed as I listen to you the, how holistic this prayer is. Wonderful. Again, just taking it for granted, it's, it's a great prayer to confess, but it becomes part of responsive reading and, and even religion when we don't connect with it. And, and cause so it really is, it's a vehicle for God to heal our soul. Absolutely. It, if one took, were to take it for no other purpose other than inner healing, and it's a, I use it in a tremendous instrument in counseling, but there's everything in it. But if one only took it as an instrument of inner healing, it's all you need. We've got to take a quick break. More with Dr. Mark Replin when we come back and later, I talk with Franklin Graham about how to make our voice heard and vote wisely in this crazy election year. Stay with us. Dr. Mark Rutland was the president of a major Christian college. By all appearances, he was a success, but unknown to others, he was in crisis. His marriage was failing, he couldn't pray. He was dead inside. Desperate and alone, he did the only thing he knew to do. He began to pray the Lord's Prayer. Over and over again, day after day, he prayed a 21-second prayer that over time revitalized his spiritual life and healed his marriage. 21 Seconds to Change Your World is a remarkable book written by Dr. Mark Rutland, the former president of Oral Roberts University and a foremost authority on Christian leadership in church. Are you struggling with your faith? Is your prayer life inconsistent and faltering? Do you feel like God was once near and now distant? The Lord's Prayer is a powerful, life-transforming revelation that releases faith, abundance, and healing when you get it into your spirit. Through a simple daily process of applying the Lord's Prayer, you will grow in your faith, release a new anointing for prayer in your life, draw near to God, and feel His wonderful presence again. 21 Seconds to Change Your World is filled with revelation about the deep truths found in the prayer given to us by Jesus Himself. It teaches you a life-saving strategy that will help you make the Lord's Prayer part of your everyday routine. This book will take your prayer life to a new level and release blessing, healing, and abundance in your life. The supernatural power of the Lord's Prayer is just as life-transforming today as it was 2,000 years ago when Yeshua, Jesus, first taught His disciples how to pray. As our gift to you for helping us in our mission to provide life-saving medical care and medicines to Jewish people and their neighbors in need, we want to send you this valuable resource. For your gift of any amount, we will send you Dr. Rutland's 21 Seconds to Change Your World. If you open your heart and can give a gift of $79 or more, we want to sew into your life Dr. Rutland's book and this decorative gold-embossed authentic parchment. Etched on the parchment, the material used to create authentic Torah scrolls is the Lord's Prayer in three languages, English, Hebrew, and transliteration from the Hebrew text. This stunning copy of the Lord's Prayer can hang on your wall. Your support will enable Jewish Voice to provide life-saving humanitarian care to Jewish people and their neighbors in desperate need. We've begun the work, but with your help, we can do so much more. There's no time to waste. People are dying, and they need your help. $79 can provide water purifiers for four thirsty children who will now, for the first time, be able to drink water free of bacteria and parasites. Remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. 
This is your opportunity to receive that blessing. Please call the number on your screen or write to us with your gift of support to Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. Welcome back. I'm talking with Dr. Mark Rutland. If you just joined us, he, he just wrote a new book, very powerful, 21 Seconds to Change Your World. You know, this is, it's so culture, this fits well within our culture, 21 mm -hmm. seconds. Mm -hmm. And you were saying uh, men are intimidated uh, when they look at great prayer warriors praying two, three hours a day uh, rather than drawn, they're intimidated. But 21 seconds, anyone can do. Yes, 21 and, seconds. And the words are there. Uh, if you can even see it in youth groups. You, you go to a youth group uh, and ask people to pray around the room. Okay, the girl right before you prays this beautiful prayer. Obviously, she's in touch with heaven. The words flow out of her. She's lucid and anointed. And then it comes to you and you say, whatever she said, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the Lord's Prayer frees men. Men who, who are, look, here's a guy who's a carpenter. He's a plumber. He's, a, he's an electrician. He, he's, not a, he's not a rabbi. He, he's just a guy. He doesn't want to think of the words. He doesn't think he's clever, and he doesn't want to be embarrassed. But if I can say to him, look, you don't have to pray two hours. Start with 21 seconds. Start with 21. It'll expand. You'll become more meditational on the prayer. You'll, you'll find new ways to pray it. But start with 21 seconds and start with the words Jesus yeah, gave I you. Yeah, and I asked you earlier, because I, I, I've experienced this with, with other scriptures as well. It really, you just feel this barrier to prayer. And that's just that one verse, yes. the Lord's Prayer that you pray over, you pray it again, you speak it out loud, and you begin, things begin to loosen up. And you actually, the clouds begin to part. And then you feel this pull towards heaven and you're able then to to move into a time of really um, uh, deeper prayer. Yes. Whereas you don't feel like it, you feel the separation, right? And it, and it just, it's it seeds. It's like putting the little bit of ether or whatever it is into the car, getting it to start and uh, it catches on and away we go. Yeah, that's exactly right. I'm, uh, I'm making an allusion to an old timey technology nobody even knows exists anymore, but it primes the pump. The 21 seconds gets you started. Then you find out that you can spend, you can spend 15 minutes praying our Father. You can, you can just take each verse meditationally. You can pray it, soak in it. Then you find, one finds, after you've saturated your mind in the Lord's Prayer and the 23rd Psalm, that specific words or phrases come out at any given moment, no matter what you're facing. It'll just rise. It'll be there because it's so in you. I love when that happens, but you've got to get it in you. Yes. I know there's many women that are watching that um, are really hoping for a breakthrough for their husband or uh, their, their, um, their son, their, their uh, grown son. Uh, this book is a tool for them. A lady at uh, Free Chapel told me the other day, or a man came to me, I should say, said his wife bought the book and said, I want you to read this. And he said, I read it very reluctantly. But he said, my wife wanted me to read it. I said, okay, I'll read the book. He said, now I've read it three times. And he said, now it's my book. It's not her book. Let me tell you about the healing power of the, of the Lord's Prayer. Please. And, and 23rd Psalm. I had a phenomenal experience eight years ago. An elderly man came to me, quite elderly. And he and his wife, he said, you've got to help us. He said, I have not had a night's sleep without a, a nightmare waking up screaming since 1945. And he said, I've tried My drugs goodness. and alcohol and everything. He said, my wife is nearly losing her mind. Every night, he said, I go to sleep. I know the same nightmare's coming. I'm going to have it every night, no matter what I do. When he was in World War II, he was a demolition expert with the Marine Corps in the Pacific. At one point, he had to blow up a machine gun nest that was pouring fire down on his company but he couldn't see it clearly. So he had to get the, bur the, the charge there. And then there was a handle he had to turn. Mm -hmm. But he looked up, he said, I had to expose myself to fire, but I had to see it was at the machine gun nest. But I couldn't hesitate. As he poked his head up, turned the thing, he blew it. But just as he turned it, he realized the enemy had tied civilians 
across the front of the machine gun nest to keep them from blowing it. But it was too late. And he said he blew those people to pieces. And he said a child's arm hurtled through the air and hit him across the eyes. That's and he horrible. said, I've seen that child's arm every night since 1945. And we began, over the space of about an hour, we began talking about the Lord's Prayer and about forgiveness. And I talked to him about forgiving those enemy soldiers, forgiving the civilians. He said, forgive, they didn't do anything. I said, forgive them for being there. Forgive yourself. And finally I said, forgive God. And he said, that's blasphemy. I said, no, it's not blasphemy unless you think God needs your forgiveness. We do not forgive in order for the person to be forgiven. We forgive in order to be free of our own unforgiveness. That is so powerful. We, when we forgive someone, it doesn't change them. It changes us. So we forgive God for, say, okay, God, I, I release you. You didn't run that moment the way I thought you should have. And we prayed and prayed. And his wife prayed and we prayed the 23rd Psalm. And I told him to go to sleep. I said, go to sleep saying the Lord's Prayer. Listen to me, Jonathan. Not a year, not six months, not three weeks. He called me the next morning. He was weeping. He said, it's the first time since 1945 I slept through the night without a nightmare. Amazing. It's a miracle. That is, it's, it is a miracle. And, and I just feel there's so many people that are watching right now that need to forgive God. Uh, you know, I, I talk in my recent book, Open a Future, about driving, looking through the rearview mirror instead of the, the, mm. the, um, the windshield, and you'll eventually get into an accident. And that's what a lot of people are doing. Mm. We're looking back. We haven't been able to forgive God, and we haven't been able to forgive ourselves. Uh, and this, these, this book and these prayers will help us to do just that. Talk more about, about um, Psalm 23, the essence of Psalm 23, because you go into that as well as the Lord's Prayer in the book. Psalm 23 is, it, it, I, I'm convinced that Psalm 23 is, is just a fantastic devotional poem. It's, it's a window on the private life of King David, of his soul. He restores my soul. David was a great man of God, but now he was a complicated servant of the Lord. And he had his ups and downs, serious. He sure did. And uh, he was a giant of a man. And when giant men are righteous, they're very righteous. When they sin, it's humdingers. And David, David went all the way. But he found a connection with God. And the 23rd Psalm is a window on that beyond anything I've ever experienced and how it dovetails with the Lord's Prayer. He begins by talking about the shepherd nature of God. The Lord's my shepherd, his providence, his guidance, his, his, prov his uh, protection. You know, sometimes you can say a verse of scripture, not twist it, but invert it and get a new look at it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What if you said it this way? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of evil, I will fear no death. Mm. Then there's nothing that can touch me. There's nothing. I, I was... Um, stopped at a military checkpoint in Africa, and all the soldiers were drunk. And uh, we had, my, my guide and I, my driver and I, had some petrol, that, a gasoline, that we had hidden inside the car, which was, we weren't supposed to have. It was against the law to hoard petrol because they wanted to keep you from having a revolution. We had hidden it behind a false back. The soldiers were all drunk, and they were, a drunken soldier with an AK-47 is terrifying. Terrifying. And they pulled that carpet out and found that illegal petrol. And I had my hands on the hood of the car and I just kept saying, deliver us from evil, deliver us from evil, deliver us, because it was so much a part of me. Deliver us from evil. And Now, did you, did you, feel, were you, did you feel fear while you were oh, doing that? Oh, my God. So you, <laughs> you know, so the emotion say, was there, but your spirit was also oh, man. engaging with what was, what was, placed it in there. You know, five or six drunken soldiers. With, yeah. Uh, they got an AK-47 strapped to their back with kite string. It's very scary. And the soldier, a female, the sergeant was a female. She was there. She had a swagger stick. You know what I mean? And high top cavalry boot. She was hitting that swagger stick on her cavalry boot. And I had my hands on the hood of the car where they told us to stand. When I was praying, she hit that swagger stick on the hood of the car. I, and it was so loud, I thought she had shot at me. And I jumped. And she started screaming, what are you doing? And I said, I'm praying. And she just kept saying it. What are you doing? I said, I'm praying. Finally, I said, I'm praying for you. 
I didn't tell her I was praying to deliver us from evil. <laughs> it didn't seem like the moment. <laughs> and she just, she just went crazy. She started yelling at her soldiers. She said, get them out of here. They reloaded our illegal petrol. The soldiers did. Got us in the car. We drove off. That's God. That was God. That is God. That's God. Stories of miracles, and I believe that God wants to do a miracle in your life, but you've got to get the seed in there. And the seed is uh, Psalm, uh, 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 Psalm 23 and a prayer that the Lord Jesus himself gave us, the Lord's Prayer. You can make it a reality in your life in 21 seconds. We want to sow Dr. Rutland's book, 21 Seconds to Change Your World, into your life. In just a second, I'm going to tell you how you can get it. Dr. Rutland will be back again tomorrow, so don't miss it. Well, up next, I talked to Franklin Graham about faith, politics, the importance of supporting Israel, uh, dynamics. Stay with us. Jewish communities like the one you just saw are in desperate need. Your gift of support will save lives by providing urgently needed medical care and medicines to some of the most impoverished people on earth. Most importantly, they will hear the transforming message of God's love through Jesus the Messiah. We've begun the work, but so much more needs to be done. Please help us while there is still time. Your gift today will save the lives of children who may otherwise die from disease. Remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. This is your opportunity to be that blessing. Help us share God's love with those who have never heard. You can make a difference. The need is urgent. Anything you can do will save lives. So please pick up the phone and call or log on to our website. As our thank you, we want to sow 21 seconds to change your world into your life for a gift of any amount. This remarkable book was written by Dr. Mark Rutland, the former president of Oral Roberts University and a foremost authority on Christian leadership in church. 21 Seconds to Change Your World is filled with revelation about the deep truths found in the prayer given to us by Jesus Himself. It teaches you a time-saving strategy that will help you make the Lord's Prayer part of your everyday routine. This book will take your prayer life to a new level and release blessing, healing, and abundance in your life. If you open your heart and can give a gift of $79 or more, we want to sow into your life Dr. Rutland's book and this decorative gold embossed authentic parchment. Etched on the parchment, the same material used to create authentic Torah scrolls is the Lord's Prayer in three languages, English, Hebrew, and transliteration from Hebrew text. This stunning copy of the Lord's Prayer can hang on your wall. Help us save and transform lives. Please call the number on your screen or write to us with your gift of support to Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona 85001. It's easy to let our busy lives get in the way of our spiritual fullness. Next time, find out how two simple prayers can change your life every day in only 21 seconds. Next time on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burnus. It's been said never talk about politics or religion. But friends, this country faces some important choices at the polls this year. I met up with Franklin Graham recently when he came to Phoenix as part of his Decision America national campaign. He had some strong advice for Christians here in the United States. Take a look. You had close to 7,000 out today at the state capitol here in Phoenix. You're going all across America with Decision, this Decision America tour. American tour. Yeah. Tell us about what this is. Well, it's about running a campaign for God. It's not a campaign for myself, but it's about getting God back into the public square, getting God back into politics, getting God's voice heard uh, throughout this nation, and that's what this is all about, and getting people like this to go vote, getting people to stand up, because if we don't, we're going to lose this nation. G give us some some advice for voting. People don't know what to do. Well, so, well, first of all, I always look for candidates that, that stand for biblical values. 
but more importantly, uh, to get behind candidates that you feel can make a difference. You need leadership in this nation. We need a, a candidate who can be a good leader. But we look at the national level, but the, the local level, we need Christian men and women running for mayors. We need Christian men and women running as, as uh, count, city council people, uh, county commissioners. We need judges, Christian judges. We need Christians at every level, and we need people to go out and run for office, get elected to office, and then let's start changing. You actually nation. challenged the people that were assembled here today to run for office. No question. To Absolutely. consider running for no. office. How, how do they do that? All right, you go down and sign up. You say, I want to run for the state legislature. But a lot of these jobs are, are, are not jobs that you have to be at the office every day. It's once a month. Or if it's a state legislator, it's a few weeks out of the year. And, and, and most of the people here today could, could do something, uh, even if it's the city council, where you maybe once a month for a few hours in the afternoon, you can do it. So begin by praying, and really, this is the time. We have a very limited window of opportunity, very don't limited. we? You said this may be our last chance. It may be, and I appreciate people being out here. Thank you for being hey, out thank here. thank you. One last question, Franklin. Uh, our program encourages Christians to stand and support yeah. Israel. I've heard you make that statement many times that well, we need to stand with Israel. Why? I, I, well, first of all, the Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It doesn't say for the peace of Washington. It says the peace of Jerusalem. So, yes, I believe in standing with Israel and with the Jewish people as the only democracy in the entire Middle East. And uh, But yet, I believe uh, still God's people. I appreciate you very Thank much. You. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Before I leave, I want to remind you, as Franklin Graham just said, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He was quoting Psalm 122, 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. So if you want to prosper, pray for Israel. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you. Since 1967, Jewish Voice has provided humanitarian aid around the world while proclaiming the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is Messiah and Savior to the Jew first and also to the nations. Jewish Voice has demonstrated God's love by providing medical care, eye care, and dental care, all free of charge, to some of the most impoverished people in the world. Your faithful support makes all of this possible. So please partner with us. Your generous gift helps transform lives by sharing God's love with those who desperately need it. Just call, click, or write. Thank you, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Join Jewish Voice Ministries as we tour the Holy Land and celebrate Israel 2017. It's time to honor the 50-year anniversaries of Jewish Voice and the liberation of Jerusalem. On this trip, you'll stay in five-star accommodations as we tour Mount Carmel, Nazareth, Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, Upper Room, and more. You'll see Jonathan Burness commemorate the recapture of Jerusalem right where it happened. We'll also visit an Israeli military base and enjoy a Bedouin meal. You can renew your marriage vows on the Sea of Galilee and participate in an immersion ceremony at the Jordan River. As an added bonus, you can even visit Eilat, the Red Sea, and world-famous Petra. Act now before this once-in-a-lifetime event sells out. Call and speak with our events coordinator to learn more exciting details about Celebrate Israel 2017 or visit jvmi.org slash Israel.